Peace tribe, what's going on? It's your girl Krista Dior. And I'm just gonna come through with the real. So I literally just touched down into my hotel. I'm half a backwards right now, y'all. Like I had I had to get me some ice for my water. And then I also got some tea brewing. I don't know, I don't know. Don't judge me. Anyway, so I'm literally just touching down, sitting in comfort. Now, it's about 6.45. Now, let me give y'all some real, real tea because you know that's what I just do. And I'm about to just, I want to take my hair down for real, for real, but I don't even know how I'm supposed to look under this and I don't really want y'all to judge me. Um, so I ain't going to do that. Anyway, um, so um, I am a traveling entrepreneur, right? So what that means is um, I have a metaphysical shop where I sell handmade copper and crystal jewelry and spiritual tools. And I do a lot of shows. So this year I told myself I want to do more festivals versus just small events. Now I do have a few small events, but excuse me, my main focus was to do festivals, at least two to three day festivals, right? Um... I'm tired. <laughs> so how my day started, right? Um, this event, the Vegan Fest in Lancaster, it basically, um, it started at 11 o'clock for people, but vendors had to be here from 7 to 9.30 to set up. Now, they want us to be off the grass by 9.30, 10 o'clock at the very latest, right? So I'm driving from Philly. So that's about an hour and a half travel time, number one. So it, on top of it being an hour and a half travel time. So then I get here. I probably got here. I probably left my, I woke up around five o'clock. I probably left around 6.30. And I probably got here around eight o'clock. And it had some soldiers and stuff going on, right? But I still got here pretty early to find a street parking spot, right? Instead of parking in their parking lot a few blocks down so i've been up since five and the event was over at five okay so that's five to five basically right um so that's a long day that's a long day now i can't really tell you what i profited because i didn't even get a chance to see <laughs> okay <laughs> i honestly didn't get a chance to see um i know i did have some decent sales and I know that I did make my booth back. So the booth for the three day, for the two days is um, it was three hundred. So I had to pay a three hundred dollar vendor fee to have a spot here at the Veg Fest, Vegan Fest. Um, now that's like the going rate. Like I mean, some of my events could be two hundred, some could be more, right? It just depends on the event. But this event was three hundred for. Um, was it 300 or 350? I really can't remember. I'm gonna say 300 to 350. I want to say it may have been 300, but it could be 352. But irregardless, I made my booth back. So um, I did make my booth back, and I'm a solo vendor. If anybody ever want to like volunteer to help me, and you in the Philadelphia area, and like you know, please do so, y'all. I'm about to get super comfortable. <laughs> I am so real, you don't understand. Anyway, um, so the event started at 11. It was from 11 to 5. And I actually liked the event because it was a vegan festival and I'm a vegan. Now, sometimes I do do these events and I can't really, like, uh, take advantage of them because either it's, like, a, a music and drinking festival or something that don't have like a lot of entertainment. I like events that do have a lot of entertainment because not only am I being, um, having to work this event, but also I'm able to enjoy this event too. Y'all, when I say I'm about to, <laughs> like, when I say I'm about to get comfortable, you can say whatever you want about me in the comment section. I <laughs> don't care. <laughs> I've been out all day. So I had got me a, um, a wood fire pizza while I was at the vegan event, right? And I'm hungry, so I'll let you see how it looks. All right, it's kind of cold. I had got this like about 4.30. I know, right? 
And I don't do microwaves. It's a microwave in here, but I'm going to eat cold pizza because microwaves are not healthy. Anywho, so, cheers. <laughs> and I got some cabbage, curry cabbage from a vendor. I was going to get, I had real food earlier. I always call it real food. I had some food from an island um, vendor. And they were selling like different, like Jamaican, Guyana, um, and it was another um, island place, plates. So I had got some of her food earlier. That was what I had earlier. And I was like, trying to look to see what I wanted. Cause I don't really eat a lot of like fake processed foods. I noticed that a little bit of fake cheese on there, but <clears throat> I didn't want any of the fake meat or anything. So, but anyway, so that's why I was able to take advantage because they had like a lot of like stuff for vegans. Had treats. I did get some fudge. I got to put that in the refrigerator. I got some strawberry fudge, strawberry chocolate fudge. It was pretty decent. The fudge guy was pretty decent. They had some good flavors. Anyway, so moving on because I hate when people do that too. <laughs> um, yeah, so the event was kind of slow but steady so sometimes i call things a slow drip right meaning I'm like it's like slow but steady and because it's a two-day event we have an opportunity to make some more sales tomorrow right now i know i made my booth bet but i'm not sure if i made my day back yet sorry what i mean by that is i do believe i made my day back i'm just trying to think about the sales i had like so i think this room was about 200 i think i'm gonna say this room you gotta forgive me, y'all, because I had to book so many rooms for June. June, I'm busy. Um, I wanna say this room was probably about, I'm gonna say up to 200. I can't really remember if I got it cheaper or not. Um, I might have got it for like 130. So I'll say it's between 130 and 200, right? <clears throat> so then also gas of me driving up here, right? We got to take that into account. So let's just say I made my day back. I made the mileage back. I made my room fee back. And I made my booth back. Right. So then the next day would just be all profit. Now, it's a, it's a good thing, true. But when I do these events, I don't really have a chance to enjoy like the place that I'm at because I be tired. <laughs> so it literally be work. Like I don't know why people think like you don't be really working. I be working. Like I literally got food. I'm going to be staying in tonight. Okay. After this, I am literally going to finish eating a little bit. Go take a shower, wash the day off of me and count my day to see what's up. And really just chill <laughs> for real <laughs> but it's kind of hard when you've been by yourself at times because this is an outdoor event so being an outdoor event i literally had to pre-pack my thing so i was able to leave my tent and my tables but i literally still had to take all my merchandise because they said we might have security but leave like take what you think is important because we ain't gonna really be watching your stuff so enter at your own risk i said okay i'm taking all my stuff because i don't know this place i don't know these people you know so i literally had to like pre-pack all my stuff but i didn't really put it nice and neat i just made it secure because in the in the rising i gotta go back and i'll probably be there by like 8:39 because I gotta really reset up. 
So that's a pro and a con when you do multiple days on an outdoor event versus in an indoor event. If you did an indoor event, you could leave your stuff. You, you could leave your setup and just come in like a half an hour before they open and just fix things up. Like I literally got to reset up. And then after the day is over, I got to pack up to go home. And I didn't get a room for tomorrow. So I'm going to be going back to Philly for an hour and a half after my long day. Right? So it's a pro and a con to being like a traveling uh, entrepreneur, especially like if you do vending shows and things like that, because sometimes, yes, you can make money, right? It depending on your product too. I'm not going to say that you're automatically going to make your money back or your booth back. It really depends on your product. When I first started vending, I had a herbal shop. So I was selling um, different multivitamins and detox blends. And I didn't make that much money when I first started vending. Nobody really cared about being healthy, you know, but it was something that I cared about and I liked doing. And then I gradually started adding the crystal jewelry and then that kind of like overtook my life. But like when I do my shows, like I get a lot of love and I'm grateful for that. Um, Y'all know that I just finished my shaman course. So like now I'm trying to incorporate my energy healing services and my tarot into my business as well. So at the end of the day, if you are a, a, a business owner, right? Here, here go some tips for you. Please let me eat this bite. <laughs> Yo, I'm real life funny. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Um, it's worth the investment to do a festival. Think about what type of festival that you're doing. And if you feel as though your product speaks for itself, be in on that. But if you want to add a few things that might be good for the festival, then do that too. At the end of the day, you're going to be taking a risk and you're taking a chance because it may not work out for you or it may work out for you. Always have an optimistic outlook of it working out for you. You attract the energy that you exude. Smile, say hello to people that come to your table. Don't just be in your phone looking down. Like you want to greet people because at the most what they're going to do is come to you to come to your table, smile back, look at you, and might look at your stuff, and they could either walk away or they might buy something or they might take your business card, right? But at the end of the day, you want to have like a, a friendly demeanor. Now, I'm not going to lie, towards the end of the day, <laughs> I was tired. So I probably wasn't, I was like MIA on my booth. Um, I was trying to look for food because if you are by yourself as well, you might want to make friends with your neighbors. So they go wash your booth while you step away, but don't abuse that either because they still trying to make a sale too. So um, that's another thing. Like if you can have help, have help, ask for help. So you can always have a second set of eyes on your uh, booth as well as so you can check out the event. Sometimes like us vendors go look at other people stuff or whatever when we get a free minute. When it's really busy, you probably don't even have a second to look at other vendors, you know? So I took the last hour and just did me and I paid for it because I still had to prepack my things. Um, if you're able to afford a room, get a room. It just makes it convenient for you. So you don't have to worry about the hustle and bustle of getting back up and commuting again to your destination. Some people do go home and some people get a room. Me personally, I prefer to just get a room. And that's just because I got too many things <laughs> and I got a far way to go. So with that being said, I'm gonna just get a room. Um, I'm trying to think of some cons. Sometimes some cons could also be your neighbors. Like you might get neighbors that don't vibe with you. 
you might get nasty customers as well or customers that try to belittle you or undermine you or do weird things like come to your booth and just put all their stuff on your booth look at you do whatever they gotta do and keep it then pick up and keep it moving like or a crowd just standing in front of your booth preventing people from coming to your booth like it'd be a lot sometimes um and honestly you know How can you say move nicely? <laughs> I don't know. Um, sometimes it could be a hit or miss, especially, I'm not going to say festivals. Festivals could really be beneficial to do, to be honest. I might be tired from this festival, but to be real with y'all, if I was to do, I prefer doing festivals because it brings in a lot of people. You don't have to really worry about trying to do a word of mouth type of energy. Like, oh, word of mouth. Tell people that we got this event going on. You don't need to do that with festivals. With festivals, people know we're about to have a festival this weekend. You coming or no? With like pop-up shops or just regular little events, they try to promote it as much as they can. Sometimes it could be a hit, and then definitely sometimes it could be a, a miss. So with those, I always say enter at your own risk. Because sometimes when people do pop-up shops, first they overcharge. Not only are they only overcharge, they didn't promote it. So now it's only vendors looking at vendors, and you're kind of wasting your time. So I would invest in a festival. If you can get help, get help. If not, still invest in it. And allow it to cut play out as it should. If you have a good product, stand on your product, you will do well. Um, think outside the box sometimes if you're looking to start a business. How can you be different from the rest? Um, if you have a skill or a service that could benefit people. Put it out there get a small booth and see what kind of traffic you could generate right but i don't know i've been talking about y'all here though my apologies y'all i came here a hot mess <laughs> i hope you can laugh like i am at the end of the day i'm tired and I did well, so I'm grateful and I'm thankful. And we got a whole nother day tomorrow. And I'm going to be taking platters home. <laughs> All right, y'all. Take care. Peace. <laughs>